Hey everybody, how's it going? So I recently broke my Pop! OS desktop, but you know what? It's okay. Out of failure, we learned some new things we can do, and this Pop! OS machine had been up for several years, and I thought, you know what? It's time for me to actually put some new things into practice with flat packs and sandboxing and all of that. So how did this happen, and then what did I end up doing, and why do I use flat packs? So let's talk about that. So what ended up happening was I was talking about the AMD sync close vulnerability. So I did a BIOS update on my Pop! OS machine over here. No biggie over there. The BIOS update was a little bit frustrating, but eventually I got it working. And the problem was, when you do a BIOS update, sometimes it will redo what your how your machine is booting. And what happened was I also had a second NVMe that I forgot that I installed in here that had Windows in here because the idea that I had fallaciously, like a lot of people think that they're going to do is, oh, I'm going to dual boot Windows, and then any games that I can't play on Linux, I'll just boot into Windows. What, end up, when, what ends up happening for a lot of people that end up doing this is you just end up in one operating system, and you basically just use that, and it's such a time-consuming waste of in, uh, effort that you basically just are like, oh, now I gotta shut down this operating system. Now I gotta boot up the other operating system. Now I gotta do the updates on the other operating system with the drivers and the Windows updates and everything like that. That I actually hadn't updated the Windows partition on things. Well, the Windows NVMe specifically. It wasn't partition. It was a whole other NVMe for about mm, year and a half. So as you imagine, it had a lot of Windows updates. So when I did the BIOS update uh, and that was running, I had gone to the bathroom because it was going to take a few minutes, and Windows then decided to boot up. The problem was Windows was booted up long enough that it ended up doing an update, which then nuked my bootloader. And this is one of the reasons why I hate dual booting Windows nowadays, because it seems like ever since... Uh, definitely 8, maybe since 7, they've been a bully on the playground at the bootloader that if they see another operating system, they're like, ha ha, yeah, yeah, screw you, we're just gonna worry about our bootloading. Um, so what ended up happening was I couldn't boot into the Linux partition no matter what I did. So I, uh, booted up the Linux Live CD, well, not Live CD, but USB with Pop! OS to try to fix it, and I spent a couple of hours trying to get it booting again, and then I just kind of sat back and I'm like, I'm taking too much time doing this. And you know what, my old Pop! OS setup, I had tweaked and configured so many different ways that I had broken a few things, and I'm like, you know what, it's time for a fresh install, and I can do some things better. So what I ended up doing was I copied everything off, the live CD, uh, live USB, I'm sorry, it's, um, it's ingrained in my head, I came with the live CD days, and I copied it over to another drive, and what ended up, uh, I did is copied over that, it was about 60 gigs of data I actually needed, um, because I didn't back them up to my NAS, uh, everything that I really needed was on my network attached storage, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And this is also why I encourage all of you to regularly do backups. Remember, three, two, one. Three different backups, two different mediums, and one of them off-site. So thankfully, my NAS had the majority of the things that I actually care about. All I needed to grab was my PGP files, and then I grabbed my Thunderbird uh, config files and everything, so I didn't have to reconfigure Thunderbird and log back into all those accounts, and then set up the plugins and everything, because that's cumbersome in and of itself, as you could imagine. Thunderbird is my email client. I've been using them for a decade and a half. So what I ended up doing was I reinstalled Pop! OS, and then what I also did was I blew Windows away from that NVMe. So now the main two terabyte NVMe is booting Pop! OS. The one terabyte NVMe is now a secondary NVMe. And then I took the two by two terabyte S SATA SSDs that I put in here, which were originally backs up backups before I got the NAS, and I broke the Z-RAID 1 array in there. So now I've got seven terabytes of storage in here that I can tinker around with. That's really going to be great for while I'm doing my LLMs and stuff, because they'll take up a lot of space, and installing a lot of different video games and config files, as well as the different blockchains for different cryptocurrencies that I do tinker with, because sometimes I like to run the nodes locally. But with that being said, uh, I, what I did to architect the system a little bit better was every single partition now is using Lux. Uh, I forget, uh, is it Linux Unified Key System or something? Basically, it's the way that Linux has built in for encryption, similar to how Windows has BitLocker, I use Lux. But BitLocker depends on the TPM, whereas Lux, I actually type a password in to log into my machine. I like to do that, especially with the fact that BitLocker has been compromised. Uh, not, was it BitLocker, or I think it was the TPM was compromised? Either way, it's not as secure as it once thought was thought to be. So I like Lux because then I can do a password, things like that. 
Okay, with that being said, then I set up Pop! OS, got my dark mode, all my settings back in, no biggie, didn't take me too long to get that. But what I did this time was instead of installing everything through a native Debian package, the equivalent of like what Windows has with the EXE files where you run the installer and then unpacks the files and then you're raw dogging it on your operating system, running on the base operating system just to run those programs and stuff. I now start using flat packs. Now what flat packs are is there's two types of different ways to sandbox things and side of Linux with your different applications. I mean, yes, there's Docker and things like that, but the main things on the desktop side are snap packages, which are more focused to Ubuntu and Canonical, and then there's Flatpak. Both of these allow for sandboxing. Windows does have the capability of sandbox, but from my understanding, it's only on the professional and enterprise versions of Windows, and it's not on the home versions of Windows. Windows is still having this issue where they charge you for security that, in my opinion, should be a standard everywhere. We should be sandboxing more things. So, with the difference is that a snap package actually packages all the dependencies from my understanding and everything. So these snap packages can be quite large, whereas flat packs have shared libraries. So I uh, uh, have everything sandboxed in here. My Firefox is basically in a sandbox. My Thunderbird is in a sandbox. My Steam for my games and everything is in its own sandbox. And you know what's amazing? I'm actually having less issues now than I was before. I used to have these weird issues with um, Steam games and stuff like that, where they would lock up a screen and then I'd have to open it up and then shut it down. I'm not getting that as much anymore. I'm actually noticing that the compatibility is a little bit better with the flat pack. And originally what started me down this path was um, I set up the Trezor wallet, which I talked about in another video as well for cryptocurrency. And I was having issues with it reliably connecting into the uh, Trezor wallet. So um, on Cubes OS uh, with Debian, just so you know, uh, a Debian cube template, which is a virtual machine. And I then was like looking it up and people were saying, well, if you install the flat pack, you're going to have less issues. So I then went down the route of learning about flat packs before DEF CON. I really fell in love with flat packs while I was setting up my laptop again the week before DEFCON. And after playing with it and seeing how reliable it was, I then decided when my Papa West machine went down, like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do flat packs for everything possible. In fact, Firefox is natively installed on Papa OS through, uh, you know, the Debian package manager or D package. Um, and I actually nuked the stock Firefox in favor of the flat pack of Firefox. Brave is now in a flat pack. Everything I could do was in a flat pack. And it allows me to easier update everything because now it's pulling from FlatHub. I no longer have to worry about manually updating my Monero uh, wallet or anything like that. And I've had less issues with a lot of the different applications. Now, there are some nuances to using flat packs. So I use a program called Flat Seal, which allows me to give different access. For example, Steam out of the box with the flat pack, of course, can't access the entire operating system. So then to add my additional drives, I had to go into flat seal and allow permission for it to access these additional drives. So now I have it seeing uh, one of my SSDs and my other NVMe with one of the SSDs being reserved for what I'm going to store virtual machines and different blockchain files and things like that. So while I'm doing, uh, uh, so I don't get the IO hit on different things. I, I think uh, having a combined total of what is it? Two, three, five terabytes of games possibly is more than enough, um, even if we're talking about the large games and things like that. So now I can install these on all the different ways. They're sandboxed as well, and that is the beauty that I have with Linux as well, because I'm running anti-cheat. So now not only is my anti-cheat running on Linux in user space, it's now sandboxed in a flat pack. It's beautiful. Now, I did have to install additional libraries, like I mentioned before, there are shared libraries, to get the uh, controllers working with Steam again. So that wasn't a big deal with my Xbox 360 controller. That was a matter of just installing the flat pack that allowed that. And it made my life a lot easier. So I really recommend you checking out flat packs today. It's an open standard you can use on almost every Linux distribution out there. It made my life easy. And I have a little bit easier of a time making those applications work reliably than I did when I was just unpacking the source. Maybe if I compiled it, I may get a pretty good chance of it. Uh, or if I grab the Debian file, then unpackage it in a Debian type operating system or an RPM. If you're on a, a, a RHEL type system, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, like Fedora, stuff like that. But a, a flat pack is an open standard you can pretty much install on most operating systems. So definitely check it out today. There are some advantages to it. I've noticed at least that I have less issues now with compatibility on certain things. And I have its sandbox. So there's a little bit easier peace of mind there that things are sandboxed and 
I'm a little bit better protected than just depending on the base application and what possibly can leak out there. Now, they're not completely foolproof. Of course, you still have the plain old-fashioned virtual machine as well, which is a little bit more hardened. There's a whole, you know, talk we can go about virtual machines, containerization, and, uh, you know, sandboxing and all of that. That could be good for another time. But anyway, I urge you to check out a flat pack. And this is Chief Geek, flat packing this discussion.